Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. Good. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. And <laughs> my name is Eva. And today I would like to introduce my company uh, in the beginning, and then I will introduce my dissertation as well. So for my company, I'm from Taiwan, and I'm also an employee from Ensist. ANSYST is an abbreviation of National Zhongshan Institute of Science and Technology. It's quite, uh, so Taiwan and England, we are going to compare, where is it? So Taiwan is in the Asia, and England is over in Europe here. Compare with uh, the company of, of mine, ANSYST is quite similar um, to DSTL in UK. So I compare the location um, in DSTL. It's over south of London, I think. And for for the location of Ensis, we range uh, we vary different places, but our main um, area is in Taoyuan, where the international airport is. So if you come to Taiwan, welcome to our company. It's quite close. <laughs> And here is some image, uh, some information I searched on Wiki. As you can see, that DSTO is uh, founded from 2001, while ANSYST is founded almost 50 years ago. But uh, we are quite ancient, I think. But I think DSTO is also a, a, another version of some UK, uh, United Kingdom um, military research institute. In terms of our, our, our organization, in, in the professional part, we separate into six um, research divisions, which includes um, Air Force stuff and missile and rockets. Thirdly, it's the information uh, communications. And fourthly, it's the chemical stuff and also the material and electro optic stuff. And the last but the most importantly, it's the electronic system research division. This is the division that I, I'm work, working for. And I'm in the antenna system section, um, electronic system research division, ANSYST. And for, um, in addition to the research divisions, we also have different centers that used to do some um, management so here are some centers. So I'm not going to go into details. In terms of the products in our division, we have several radars, seekers, SARS, and these information you can all find it on our website. From we actually make products from components to systems. We have electronic system integration. RF antenna design, uh, precision electronics, automatic testing platform, power and real-time signal processing, data target processing. For the star part here is something that I have some rela uh, related to me, so I'm going to go into detail for that. For the RF antenna design, our section have the biggest um, have the largest near field measurement um, uh, place. So we have two different, one is for the uh, vertical near field, and another for, it's for the uh, horizontal vertical, uh, horizontal near field measurement uh, lab. And another product I also have some uh, I also work on some of that. It's the precision electronics components. So one one thing that I have worked on is this one. This is the uh, phase shifter used on the passive passive radars. And also I have been work on some project about the automatic testing platform, which used to test the phase shifter. So these are all examples of some taste platform. And this is just a, a draft of the, not a draft, an illustration of the weapon, syst uh, weapon system structure. 
Um, I'm not going to do uh, work on detail of this. I just work on this part, the red part, uh, because I, what I am doing most is about the face of it right up. So we put, <laughs> we put our face array antenna onto it. So this is the position we are in. And that's all. It's a very brief introduction of my company. And if you have some, you want to learn more about our company, welcome to go to our official website or some YouTube channel. We have some fantastic uh, promotional video, I think. And then I'm going to continue with my dissertation. Um, I'm working on a project called Passive Bystatic Radar, and uh, my supervisor is Professor Hugh Griffiths with Dr. Uh, Matthew Ritchie. Speaking of the content, I'll divide it into five parts. I'll begin with the introduction and then background, and the methodology going to two parts, the simulation and the experiment. Then I'll conclude with a summary. So why it's passive by static radar? We all know that interest in passive by static radar has been increased recently for the persistent um, surveillance. And also, they have the advantage of the unlicensed, convert, and cost-effective way. So I'm more interested in the Wi-Fi-based um, passive by static radar because they have a wider bandwidth so that could possibly be used for the short-range short um, surveillance. And also the pro prolific distribution in the urban areas. And what's the problem of PBR? It's the uh, non-cooperative nature of the transmission signals. So, um, this is the project M. The background of the Wi-Fi based um, um, PBR started actually from UCL. So I think Kevin Chetty have a really good research on um, on a Wi-Fi based uh, PBR. It was Carl Carl Woodbridge started it. I, mean, <laughs> I, I used to work for Carl, but yeah. Yeah, so it actually starts from uh, UCL. And uh, we have done some experiments on beacons, on OFDM signals, and also on through the world application. Uh, but for the project I'm doing today, um, because I only have limited time, so I would like to focus on um, how it, um, what different signals in Wi-Fi signals uh, really helps the PBR application. So my simulation will be separate into the generation of Wi-Fi wi 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 waveform. And I'm using IEEE 802.11n standard and with 20 megahertz OFDM uh, signals. And I, I also simulate the surveillance signal with a, with a um, artificial target here with a specific delay and loss and also the Doppler shift. The next step I'm doing is doing the ambiguity function analysis. So the ambiguity function is the, uh, the result of, of the match filter output uh, with specific uh, Doppler delay. Then I do the um, close ambiguity function with the surveillance signals and the reference signals. And I can get a target that I want. In terms of the results, um, as you can see on the slide, these are the waveform um, in time domain and the spectrum in the frequency domain. The first thing I, um, here I simulated two signals one for a shorter data length, another for a longer data length. And I would like to see how different it is in the ambiguity function. So the, the parameters I'm using for the delay and duplicate shift is 1.5 microsecond and 5 megahertz duplicate shift. 
from the waveform, we can see the difference of short range, uh, of short data length and long data length. And also we can see the response of a delay and a loss. The blue one is the surveillance channel and uh, no, the red one is the surveillance channel and the, the blue one is the reference channel I simulated. From the spectrum, um, I can see clear 20 megahertz bandwidth over here and also a response of Doppler shift of 5 megahertz. And these are two um, uh, plots of the ambiguity function results. It looks quite quite similar, but they have a, a, little, a little bit different. For the one, for a shorter um, data length of the Wi-Fi uh, of the Wi-Fi signal, they are actually more dominated by the preamble header patterns. So they have some some silos in the delay, and I uh, I I I list it. I list it uh, here. So the uh, the overall um, data is like 10, 10 to twenty dB silo, and along these ranges. And as you can see in the delay domain, we can also spot a gap. Uh, um, at 51 mega, uh, microsecond. This is because I, I use, uh, this is because the time being that I use. So I have a gap over here. And in the Jupla, the overall um, silo is around my minus 23 dB. So I compare that with a longer data length in the Wi-Fi. And this is the OFDM signal, so it mainly dominated by the guard interval and cy cyclics uh, pre 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 uh, prefixing. And um, in summary, that the silo improves so in in delay part and also in the duple part. In duple part, they improves for five dB. And I also run this with the simulated target. And for the error percentage of the target detection, if I'm doing a shorter, shorter data length, um, the detection in delay is, the error is quite, it's about 27% of the error. But if I'm doing in a longer, longer data length, um, the, the error in delay is nearly, it's zero. Uh, for the Doppler shift, um, it decreases only one percent of error in in a longer data data length. So overall, the longer data length in Wi-Fi benefits the target detection. So I also do an experiment of the real data and see how how the ambiguity function in, improves in this data. These are the setup of the of the of the hardware, and I use Wi-Fi uh, wi access point, anten two antennas, and Lime SDR hardware. This is how Lime SDR looks like, and thanks for Colin's help. Yeah, he helps me to set up for um, most of the hardware. And also, I use the laptop with GNU radio software to receive the Lime SDR signal and the MATLAB to process the signals. And these are the frequency settings for the Lime SDI and Wi-Fi MP. And in the experiment, I do, I do, I record two different, two, two different signals. One is in the idle mode, another is for the transmission mode. So the idle mode means when you turn on the Wi-Fi, they, they will have this uh, signal transmitting. It's part of the management um, of the Wi-Fi frame. And the beacon signals I have um, noticed here is about one millisecond. And mostly you can see on the spectrum, it's like, like noise here. And then in the transmission mode, you can see they, uh, both of the reference and surveillance signals, they are, they are running on the transmission. 
transmission part, and they have the OFDN signals. And also here, we got some beacons over here. And in terms of the spectrum, the transmission mode signals have a clear spectrum over here. So here I was trying to do some calculation of the ambiguity function. I also, these are two different mode signals I have, uh, I have, I got. And I do the ambiguity function based on part one, um, mainly with beacon signals in both mode and part two with no beacon signals in both modes. And these two are the results of it. The first one is the part one. So beacon signals in the I, I, uh, idle mode. It turns out that the Wi-Fi signals of, uh, in transmission mode has a lower, has a better performance because their silo is lower. And the silo was decreased by uh, 11 dB um, in both delay and duplicate cuts. In terms of this uh, waveform here, um, what what found, uh, what I think is quite interesting is that because in I uh, in the idle mode, um, if you don't have the beacon, then that mainly consists of the noise. And while here, if you don't have beacons, they mainly consist of OFDM signal. And we all know that OFDM signal is a noise-like um, waveform. So how to, how to distinguish the difference between these two? We mainly um, focus on two, two things. One is the magnitude. The OFDM signal has a, long, has a larger magnitude over the noise. And another one is the silo patterns. So the noise, um, the noise, the noise signals, you nearly don't have any silos over here, but the OFDM signals have some silos pattern here. So in conclusion, uh, I do a simulation with an artificial target at a 1.5 microsecond delay and five megahertz Doppler shift. And in the experiment, I carry out with a cost-effective e Lime SDR hardware and also the open source GNU radio uh, software. The conclusion is that the silo over the longer data length is better than a shorter data length in Wi-Fi signals. And in the experiment, I can also uh, see that the transmission mode uh, silo, it's better than idle mode silo. Okay, that's all. <laughs> so, thank you.